Hello. In today's video, we are going to discuss the flotation of ice, which is included in a topic called hydrostatics, the first year physics textbook of plus one students. So we will discuss three cases: ice floating on the surface of pure water, ice floating on the surface of pure water with an object inside it, and third one. Ice floating on the surface of a liquid, which is denser than water. Our aim is to see what happens to the liquid level when ice melts. In all the three possible cases, after the ice block melts, what will happen to the liquid level? This is what we are going to inspect. So let us discuss the first case where ice is floating on the surface of pure water. Now we will solve these three cases, these three problems. By using the first law of flotation, and all of you know what is meant by the first law of flotation. What is the first law of flotation? Mass of the floating body equal to mass of the liquid displaced by the body. That is the first law of flotation. Mass of the floating body equal to mass of the liquid displaced by the body. Now let us look at the first case where we have an ice block of mass m floating on the surface of pure water in a jar so let me put the ice block in water in a jar the level of water will rise by a few centimeter now we are going to see what happens to the water level once the ice block melts so we come to our problem the mass of the ice block is 10 gram now tell me according to the first law of flotation what is the mass of water displaced by the ice block that is also m gram we have the mass of water mass of the ice block as m gram therefore the mass of water displaced is also m gram by the first law of flotation then tell me what is the volume of water displaced mass of water displaced divided by density of water which is 1 in cgs so this is equal to m gram per cubic centimeter is it clear mass of the ice block is m gram according to the first law of flotation mass of water displaced is also m gram then volume of water displaced is mass of water displaced by density of water which is m gram per cubic centimeter now let the ice block melts melts what will happen when ice melts m gram of ice melts how many grams of water will be obtained m gram very simple when m gram of ice melts we will get m gram of water so the mass of water obtained upon the melting of ice block is again m gram then what is the volume of water obtained mass of water obtained by density of water which is again m gram per cubic centimeter so we have two volumes the volume of water that the ice block was displacing when it was floating and the volume of water supplied by supplied by the ice block when it melted you find that both of them are the same the volume of water that ice block was displacing when it was floating is m gram per cc the volume of water supplied by the ice block upon melting is also m gram per cc the volumes are equal so there is no level change so in the first case when ice block floats ice block floats on the surface of pure water upon melting there is no level change that is our first problem clear now let us look at the second problem where an ice block is floating on the surface of pure water again but this time with an object embedded inside it the thing is that when ice melts this object will sink to the bottom so the object can be a lead shot a grain of sand a piece of stone it can be anything but the thing is when ice melts this thing should sink to the bottom of the container now here one thing is that we don't have to bother about the mass of the ice block why because we have already shown that when ice melts there is no change in the water level so we don't have to bother about the mass of what ice block we are interested only in the mass of the object that is embedded inside the ice block let the mass of that object be m gram remember very clearly this m is not the mass of the ice block as it was in the previous case this is the mass of the object which is embedded in the ice block it is floating 
So what is the mass of water displaced? That is also m gram according to the first law of notation. Let this be a leg shot. The mass of the leg shot is m gram. That is what we have assumed. We are not considering the mass of the iceberg. Why? Because upon melting of the ice block, there is no change in the water level. So mass of the leg shot is m gram. Mass of water displaced is also m gram. Then what is the volume of water displaced? Mass of water displaced by density of water which is m gram per cubic centimeter. So the volume of water displaced by the lead shot when it was floating by being embedded in the ice block is m gram per cubic centimeter. Now let the ice melt. What will happen? The lead shot will sink to the bottom of the container. Slowly but steadily it will sink to the bottom of the container. How much volume of water will be displaced by this lead shot when it is going, when it is sinking to the bottom? Its own volume. How much is the volume of the lead shot? Mass of the lead shot divided by density of lead. So this is equal to m by d gram per cubic centimeter. <clears throat> now tell me, is this p2 less than v1 or greater than v1? Clearly, it is less than V1. Why? Because D is greater than 1. That is why the body lead shot sank to the bottom of the container. Density of lead is greater than that of water. That is why the lead shot sank to the bottom of the container. So, V2 is less than V1. What does it mean? The volume of water that the lead shot was displacing when it sank to the bottom is less than the volume of water that it was displacing when it was floating. The volume is less now. So the level will fall. The level will fall. V2 is less than V1. So the level should fall. Level will fall. Here the level remains the same. Here the level will fall. Why? Because when the body is sinking to the bottom of the container, the volume of water that it displaced, displacing is less than the volume of water that it was displacing when it was floating. Let us look at the problem in a different way. I will explain. Suppose you put your hand in into water in a jar. When you press the when you press the water column or when you uh, insert your hand into water slowly and steadily. Let us put it deeper and deeper. What happens when you when your hand goes inside the water column deeper and deeper, you find that the level is rising slowly and steadily. Now you withdraw the hand from the water. What happens? As you take the hand out, the level is falling. The thing is, when you are putting your hand more and more in water, you are displacing more and more volume of water. Remember this very clearly. Got the idea? When you are sinking your hand, more and more into water the level is rising because you are displacing more and more volume of water and when you take your hand out what happens you are displacing less and less volume of water and the level is falling so when the volume of water displaced is more the level will rise when the volume of water displaced is less the level will fall so v2 is less than v1 so the level will fall clear and finally let us look at the case of ice blocks floating on the surface of a liquid denser than water. We take a liquid which is denser than water and make the ice block float on the surface of it. Again, we start with the, the starch as we have done in the previous two cases. Mass of the ice block is n gram. So mass of the liquid displaced that is also m gram for slow flotation. Mass of the floating body equal to mass of the liquid displaced by the body. What is the volume of our liquid displaced? Mass of liquid displaced by density of the liquid displaced. M by D gram per cubic centimeter. Why D here? The ice block is no longer floating on the surface of water. It is floating on the surface of a liquid that whose density is greater than that of water. So V1 is M by D gram per cc. Now let the ice melt. How many grams of water will be obtained? No doubt M gram. What is the volume of water supplied? Mass of water supplied by density of water, which is 1. So this is equal to m gram per cubic centimeter. See the difference? 
the volume of liquid that ice was displacing when it was floating was m by d gram per cc and the volume of water supplied by the ice block upon melting is m gram per cc which is small v2 is greater than v1 and therefore the level is level will rise ice is supplied a volume of water which is more than the volume of liquid that it was displacing when it was floating the volume of liquid that it was displacing when it was floating was m by d gram per cc and the volume of water that it supplies when it melts is m gram per cc the volume is more now so the level will rise clear okay